Okay, so I've been meaning to overclock my Pi 5 for a while uh, when I read that the limitation of 3 gigahertz had been lifted. But now it's officially in the EEPROM update, it's much easier. So all you have to do is have an up-to-date Pi 5 and you can overclock beyond 3 gigahertz. Obviously overclock at your own risk. So the setup I'm using is a 52 Pi ice tower cooler and I'm using CPU paste between the heatsink and the CPU stroke GPU and that seems to be nicely effective. Uh, it only covers the CPU GPU and no other components are touching this one. Uh, it does have a fan, an active fan, and that's connected to the standard connector on the Pi 5. So that will only come on when the temperature gets too hot. I have the NVMe drive on the base now, so it's not restricting anything. And uh, obviously NVMe's get hot. I've got a sensor now to tell me how hot the NVMe is getting so I can monitor that. I've never been that worried about it in the past, really. I'm using these heat sinks from Cytron sent me ages ago. I don't use them on the CPU and the various different components, um, but they've provided quite nice feet because they were adhesive to this NVMe board, and then I put these rubber feet on them as well. So I'm all plugged in and I'm ready to go. I've launched P Sensor and I've actually renamed a lot of this because you can click on an individual component and preferences and it tells you what it is. So I can see that this is the RP1 chip here and so I've just named it RP1 CPU GPU. You can see it comes up as CPU thermal, obviously fan, NVMe. We've got NVMe composite and NVMe sensor one and you can see from the sensor here that the sensor one is the one that gets the hottest. So I think this is probably on the board and this is the actual NVMe temperature. I'm not sure, but I think that's what it is because it's the higher one. And as you can see, the NVMe is the second hottest part of this board at the moment. The top one is the RP1 chip. So there may be some benefit in cooling that RP1 chip, but then that said, I'm not gonna be overclocking the RP1 chip. I'm gonna be overclocking the CPU, GPU for better performance. And 44 degrees isn't very hot. And these two bits are CPU usage and free memory. And I'm using my version of KDE Plasma, which is based on Raspberry Pi OS and comes with P-Sensor and various other things all pre-installed. Right, let's install Geekbench uh, with Pi Apps. Let's pop it in here. And you can see Geekbench 6. And let's install that. Okay, that's all done. Let's open a terminal with Ctrl-Alt-T and launch NeoFetch just to show what it's currently running at. So the download is always just at stock, so 2.4 gigahertz. So without changing anything, let's launch Geekbench 6 and do a test because we want to see if overclocking gives us an advantage because obviously if it doesn't, there's no point in doing it. We're using more power, but we're not getting more performance. So we'll come back when that test is all done. Okay, so that's all finished. Let's have a look. So this is the score to beat, so 789 single core and 1630 multi-core, and that's at a speed of 2.4 gigahertz. And you can see it tells you in here, and I'll scroll through. You can pause if you want to see any of these particular tests. So let's try overclocking. So let's open a terminal and go into config.txt. And you can see here, I've got some settings and I need to delete the hash to enable them. So I'm gonna go with 2.8 gigahertz, so a 400 megahertz increase, so that should give us a decent improvement. And they recommend over underscore voltage underscore delta as the method of adding extra power to the CPU. And if we go into the Tom's hardware story, so we've got 50,000 that's adding 0 0.05 volts. Uh, there is a maximum you can add and it's mentioned here that one volt is the upper limit. So let's save that and then reboot. And we'll try that test again. Okay, let's start that. Okay, so that's all done. I didn't check the temperature before on the previous one, but on this one, you can see the CPU's got up to 58 degrees and the NVMe is nice and cool. So let's open this up. And we've had a pretty good increase. So we've gone from 789 at 2.4 GHz to 872 on the single core score. And we've gone from 1630 up to 1694 on the multi-core score. And if I scroll down, so 2.8. 
and you can pause on any of those. I'm going to go straight up to 3 gigahertz now and save that and again reboot and run the test again. So still a decent improvement, so 922 single clock score, remember we started off at 789 and then went to 872 and multi-core score 1734 and we started off at 1630. So 3 gigahertz, if it is stable, looks like it definitely would be worth doing. Uh, and temperature wise, 59 degrees, we were on 58 degrees before, the RP1 temperature is the same at 54 degrees and the NVMe has gone up to 49 degrees. Okay, let's go past three gigahertz. So I guess we go three one first of all. I'm gonna leave the over voltage delta because I'm not getting any instabilities or anything, but if it starts to crash, then I might increase that. Well, it's still increasing. 922 goes up to 937, 1734 goes up to 1744. The CPU temperature is obviously a little bit higher, but it's only 61 degrees. The RP1 is one degree more at 55. The NVMe is actually cooler at 48. And uh, obviously the fan went a bit faster because the CPU went a bit higher. So it's 2176 RPM, whereas previous tests were 1108 and 1093. So let's try 32. Well, that's my first failed boot. It's doing this at the moment. So let's switch it off and switch it on again. That was a reboot. Now I've done a, a power off, power on. Okay, so that's not working. 3175 gives me a mouse pointer, but nothing else. 3160 is booted, but it's crashed. 3150 is working. And just to show it, this is a post on Facebook, not my post. It was a post from Quinton Van Ginderen and uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't genuine, he does say in the post. Uh, for your information, the video has been staged, but I thought it would be a good thing to put in an overclocking video. So 3150 with an over underscore voltage delta equals 100,000, and that seems to be stable at the moment. I've rebooted it several times, and as you can see, I was, I was viewing Facebook. Where 3160 didn't work, 3150 does seem to be okay, but obviously we're teetering on the edge here. Uh, so I'll run Geekbench and try it. So it's working at 3150, but I haven't got it to do a successful Geekbench test yet. It keeps crashing, so it's clearly too high for this particular Pi. So I'm probably going to do more tests with it at 3.1 because it seemed to be stable at that. But I thought I'd test the 4 gig Pi. I thought I'd give it a try and just see what sort of results. I'll leave the stock Raspberry Pi cooler on there. And uh, let's just see if it boots with this higher setting because it may not. And as I say, this 8 gig Pi quite often doesn't boot with that setting. So my four gig Pi has failed to boot. You can see I've got the NVMe drive separate here, so it's not impeding any of the cooling of the official Raspberry Pi cooler, but yeah, it's just a black screen. So I'm gonna remove the overclock and give it another try. So I'll remove the overclock, and then I tried several different overclocks. I tried three one and I tried three gigahertz, and they didn't launch. Uh, I did get this to launch, uh, so 2800, which is good because it means I can compare it to the 8 gig Pi in a test. So let's run Geekbench and see how it fares. Okay, so even though I couldn't overclock higher than 2.8 gigahertz, I've still managed to get a really good score. So if we compare the 8 gig Pi 5, I had a single core score of 872 and I've got 899 on the 4 gig and multi-core score, so 1863 on the four gig Pi 5 is actually better than any multi-core score I've got on the eight gig Pi 5 by quite a bit. So interesting results. Uh, I can overclock my eight gig Pi 5 higher than I can my four gig. And I bought these two models at exactly the same time. So I was given an early access Raspberry Pi 5 eight gig model, which definitely doesn't overclock that well at all but that's to be expected because it was an early release and they don't go through the same stringent tests but the 8 gig and the 4 gig I bought from the same retailer at the time. If you're interested in, in the results and, and uh, more information about the differences between the 8 gig and the 4 gig there's quite a few threads uh, so one here from the previous EEPROM update and by the way I was running the latest EEPROM update on both of my Pi 5s 
Uh, so adjust the SDRAM refresh rates according to temperature and address the performance gap between 4 gig and 8 gig parts in benchmarks. I mentioned that in my one of my previous videos and you can click on that to expand it. And there's also a newer one here, USB write speed performance. Uh, and if we click on it, it also mentions the 4 gig Pi 5 and also the 8 gig Pi 5. So how that works in the real world, I guess we'll have to test and find out. But certainly in benchmarks, it looks a lot better favoured towards the 4 gig Pi 5. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.